how much of the sedimentary rock record was actually deposited during Noah's flood. Well, following along from part one, we are going to look at three pieces of evidence that should cause creationists to reconsider a pre-Cambrian Cambrian flood boundary. I think the most powerful piece of evidence that should cause creationists to reconsider this boundary is the existence of something called Cambrian stromatolites. Now, Cambrian stromatolites are often, but not always, column-shaped mounds made up of carbonate mud. They accreted on the shallow ocean floor due to the photosynthetic effects of cyanobacteria. As mud became entrained in the sticky EPS sheaths of cyanobacterial communities, the communities requiring more light would move through the mud to a new surface where sunlight was available. Of course, eventually this new community would also get swamped in mud, and so the bacteria would continue their upward march for sunlight. Eventually, you end up with a stromatolite. Growth rates for these communities are incredibly slow. The maximum recorded growth rate for modern examples is about 30 centimeters per year, and that's fast. The problem is that there are dozens and dozens of layers of these stromatolites in Cambrian sediments in many places in the world, including North America, China, Korea, Russia, Australia, Iran, Argentina, Kyrgyzstan, and Antarctica. Yet if Cambrian sediments represent the onset of Noah's flood, then how can we account for hundreds of meters of growth in just one year, the length of the flood as recorded in scripture? As an example, let me use Cambrian stromatolites that became the focus of my PhD dissertation. In western Utah, there are at least 14 levels of stromatolites in upper Cambrian sediments. Each layer is anywhere from just a few centimeters in thickness to sometimes several meters in thickness. Not only are there thick sequences of stromatolites, sometimes these sequences extend out for thousands of square kilometers. Common solutions to this problem abound, and I will touch on just a few of the main ones here. Uh, the first one that is often discussed is growth rate. Is it possible that they grew really, really fast? And of course, the answer to that from a Christian perspective is yes, of course, because anything is possible with God. God can do what he wants. But naturally speaking, you can't get hundreds of meters in thickness of stromatolites in just one year. And since the Cambrian actually represents the onset of the flood, you would actually have to grow these stromatolites in just a few weeks or months. Essentially, this is not scientifically possible. Another solution proposes that they are not biological. The only problem with that is that even non-biological analogs, which we do have today, also grow very slowly. But the biggest problem to this solution, however, is that I have actually found evidence of sponges intertwined with the muds. Uh, this means that at some stage in the growth of these stromatolites, they were actually encrusted by sponges. Another idea is that they were moved to this location from some pre-flood environment. Yet I photographed several stromatolites that were clearly anchored to the ground, suggesting natural growth from the ground up. All of these stromatolites from my research area were also in a right side up vertical position, spaced just a few centimeters apart over large areas. In fact, I only documented a single stromatolite out of hundreds that was on its side. If these stromatolites were transported, we should expect to see them in various orientations, not just upright. Some have suggested that the whole reef, perhaps several thousand square kilometers worth, was moved during the flood. The problem with this view is that uh, each reef layer is separated by carbonate muds. Uh, this would mean that each reef would have to be moved and then evenly stacked one atop of the other in such a way that any evidence of this catastrophic geologic process was removed. You see, there are no faults or other large-scale geologic features that support such a catastrophic relocation. The relocation theory becomes untenable when we consider that these stromatolite reefs 
can be found in many places in the United States. Uh, not only do they exist in many locations, but interestingly, these locations are located on a general arc that spans North America, starting in Newfoundland, traveling down to the New York area, crossing the southern United States to Texas, then moving over to the region around Utah, California, and Nevada, before continuing the trail northward through Idaho, Alberta, and on into the Northwest Territories of Canada. This arc actually represents the ancient continent of Laurentia, and these stromatolite reefs are found along the coast of that ancient continent, which on the makes sense since they are shallow water growth structures. And as I said earlier, these stromatolites are actually found in many other places in the world. In my ANSYS research journal paper, for example, I counted over 60 stromatolite containing horizons from the early Cambrian through early Ordovician sediments of central China. I'm quite confident that I'd find a similar situation in other places around the world. One final piece of evidence that I believe is really problematic is the trilobite biostratigraphy specific to these upper Cambrian stromatolites. Uh, this simply means that fossil trilobites can be found spanning the same section of the column where the stromatolites are found. The problem is the order in which these fossils are found relative to other sections in the Western United States. Compare, for example, uh, the suite of trilobites from my research site in Utah with a similar suite from Texas. Both suites contain eight trilobite zones that I've colored for emphasis. Now, these not only correlate, but they correlate in their relative positions within the sediments. Notice that these eight zones do not appear out of order. Now, yes, there are some extra zones and some missing zones that I've left white, but the ones that do appear all appear in a relative order. And these aren't the only two locations. A similar trend also occurs in other locations, including Nevada, California, Colorado, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. This sequence even occurs in areas of Canada. If these Cambrian sediments do represent the onset of the flood of Noah, how does this catastrophic phase of the flood deposit these very small and relatively isometric trilobites in the same relative order over an area that expands from Utah to Canada to New Mexico? The best way to interpret these trilobites uh, really is in terms of an ecologically diverse and active environment. Now, you are probably thinking to yourself, hey, what's the big deal? Okay, so they grew in place in the pre-flood world. Yet this interpretation has logical consequences for the current creationist model. You see, directly under these Cambrian sediments is the Great Unconformity. If the Cambrian stromatolites grew in place in the pre-flood world, then the Great Unconformity cannot have formed at the onset of the flood. Secondly, there are billions of fossils in these Cambrian sediments, yet modern creationists use the Great Unconformity and the existence of billions of dead animals in Cambrian deposits as evidence in support of the flood. Uh, yes, there are lots of other evidences, don't get me wrong, but these two are the smoking guns if you like. So you can see why my views are not very popular in mainstream creationism. Uh, now, I'm not saying that the traditional interpretation is necessarily wrong. Remember, this is a scientific question, not a theological one. But these issues either need to be addressed in creationist circles, or at the very least, they need to be acknowledged, or we need another model. Well, in part three of this series, I will present another model. Now, I'm not saying it's correct, but it does deal with these data and provides a solution. For those uh, who are following my research, you can find more resources on my website, www.creationunfolding.com, or you can spend three American dollars and buy my book. And now, if you haven't already, please don't forget, hit that button and subscribe for fast access to more videos. Thank you and goodbye.